there with your boy Davidoff. So this weekend I am flying off to another country. I'm going to go on holiday, my second adventure of 2024. A big free week adventure, a place where I've got family, where I've got things to see and plenty of things to do. I'm very excited to share with you the things that I do over there. Some of you know where I'm going. But before then, it's time for Dune Part 2. I'm excited for this one. The first one, I didn't know much about it. I never read the books. I never watched the original movies. I didn't know anything about Dune. Um, I looked at the trailers. It looked like a different version of Star Wars in a way, but darker and uh, a little bit more intriguing. Well, I, I love Star Wars, but like this one just seemed like very in-depth compared to Star Wars. So I went to watch it partly because of the cast. It had an amazing cast. I'm just like, okay... You've sold me on the cast. Like, the trailer looked good, the visuals looked nice, but I thought, you've sold me on the cast here. They've got so many star big star-studded people. I've got to go and see it. That's the main reason I actually went to see it, because I didn't know that much about Dune. I watched Dune Part 1, and it wasn't just the cast I liked. It was a very good movie. I really enjoyed it. It had an interesting storyline, an interesting premise, a nice setup for a possible franchise, and... It was really good, you know, it was, I really liked what they were doing, it felt very different, even though there was similarity to Star Wars, it just felt like its own thing, it felt different, and it just, it was just so good. So since then I've been very excited for the second one, even though they killed off a lot of the cast of the first one, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hyped, the trailers look good, the visuals look nice, the reviews are great at the moment, um, I never let reviews um, change my judgement, but... It's good to see good reviews, uh, you know, it gives you a good feeling. But um, I always judge for myself, but I am fairly confident I will like it. <laughs> I I would be very surprised if I didn't like this movie. So, uh, yeah, it's it's almost three hours long, including adverts. Things like two hours, 40-something. Um, I'm watching the 7.10 showing, and there is actually a 10.50 showing. And I was thinking to myself, would that not end at 2 a.m.? No, the cinema's going all in, which is great, because the cinema's normally not open as much as it used to be. We used to have midnight releases for big big movies, not anymore over here. But uh, yeah, I'm very excited regardless. Uh, I'm looking forward to this and I just hope it's really good and I'm confident it will be. So uh, yeah, I also had my work schedule change, which really helped because I would not have been able to see this until I came back uh, from my holiday. Why? Because I had Wednesdays off and this came out, came out on Friday. My schedule at work was every Wednesday off. But something came up, a co-worker of mine needed Wednesdays off and I needed to cover for this co-worker, so I had to switch my day around. And they asked me, like, you can have, I mean, I, I looked at the days and I thought, it's not going to work for me unless to do every Thursday off, every Friday off. Like, those are the two years I can switch to uh, in my workplace because that made the most sense. Um, I picked Fridays, partly because I get extra days um, for holidays. If I want to go on, like, a short trip somewhere, I get a three-day weekend every two weeks. Um, and on top of that, it's just that move. I watch a lot of movies. I watch a lot of movies and most movies release on Friday, if not Thursday, sometimes Wednesday, but by Friday, they're usually all released in cinemas. So I thought to myself, having every Friday off work makes so much sense for me as someone who goes to cinema so often. It's perfect. Friday's off. I can watch new releases on the day. And luckily, the schedule change happened recently, so I could watch Dune before I depart on my holiday. So this was perfect timing for me. So I'm very excited. I'm glad I get to see it before I go on holiday. And I'm seeing it in IMAX as well, because this, a spectacle like this, deserves to be seen in IMAX with a pot of nachos. I say a pot. I'm going to get, I'm going to go to Cineworld, order large nachos, get two, probably two cheese dips, because I don't like salsa. Might get sour cream, I don't know. I'm going to sit there for three hours with my nachos. I'll finish my nachos before the movie even starts, to be honest. And then I'm going to enjoy this two hour, 50 minute or something extravaganza. I'm very excited. I cannot wait. Let's go and do it. And we are here. Miserable day though. Miserable day. Just went to book my seat and the screen is almost full. Cinema is well and truly here, my friends. Oh my days. So that was nothing short of incredible. I'll talk about it more when I get home. Start time was 7.10 and I came out at 10.27. So that's a short time frame we're looking at. Obviously that includes adverse and trailers. Um, yeah, 
first of all, it's good to see a full house, almost a full house, nearly empty parts, but the front is just packed full of people. And I love that. I love when cinema brings, I love when a film brings that many people <laughs> into the screen. Um, oh, it was a very serious movie. Um, so there wasn't many like crowd reactions apart. There was some funny bits though. Uh, definitely got uh, the people going. But I just love being in the cinema. That's one of the reasons why the cinema experience is so good. Obviously, the big screen and added experience of IMAX is incredible in itself. But watching it with a full house, there's something special about that to me. I don't know what it is. It just it, it just is. It's just so special by cinema. Um, but yeah, that was incredible. Once again, it is pretty chilly, so I'm gonna get home first, and then I'll talk to you more. I'm really glad I got to see this film before going on holiday. It would have been I would have been so gutted to me. I mean, I could have watched it over there. In fairness, I would have had a probably would have had a spare few hours anyway but just in case it was good to watch it now uh yeah it outdid the first one i think it was much better than the first one the first one was great as well <laughs> like the first one this one i loved it um there were parts that were slow a few parts here and there especially in the middle of the movie there were a few slow scenes here and there the movie as a whole is fairly quite slow but like slow can be good if it's done right this is slow done right but you also get this big payoff at the end as well there's some action sequences before that at the start throughout the movie but not as much. But at the end, you get these big action sequences and they really do pay off. But even before that, the movie is really good. The character building, the universe building, rather than world building, the building of different worlds, uh, the storytelling. Did I say character building? I don't even know. I'm just, I'm, I'm, my head is, <laughs> my head is somewhere else after watching that. Like the uh, new cast members that they added in, um, they certainly killed a few off at the same time. Um, but yeah um i i really like the lore of it the the premise of it um i mentioned there were some funny bits um maybe not intentionally funny but there were some bits where there was like uh, religious fanatics and the way they justified what uh, paul atreides was doing in certain scenes it was just really funny i had hulk i, I like hard people to see them laughing <laughs> at the way to just believe in the prophecy and it's hard to explain it without you actually watching it but if you watched it you know what scenes i'm talking about those were the funny scenes because you know just the way the way Stilgar was talking about Paul in certain scenes, it was just really funny. <laughs> it was just really funny, but yeah, a, a general uh, really good movie, and I like the spectacle of it, and uh, I want to see more of this uh, world. I feel like I mean I haven't read the books, so people that have read the books will know a lot more than me. But apparently, there's a lot in the books. There's a lot more. Apparently, the movies just scratched the surface. But apparently, movies do a good job of portraying what the books are. They would leave some bits out, but that, that's that's just how it is. With, with books, books, there's so much detail in them. You can't fit them into even a series of movies. You've got to go a very long time. But even though I haven't read the books, I feel like they're putting a lot in into these movies. So again, I haven't, because I haven't read the books, I can't judge well enough. But I, I just get the feeling that people who have read the books will probably like these. Whether I'm right or wrong, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I would assume so, because th they're putting a lot into this. A lot. And yeah, some scenes do feel slow, but I still think it's worth it. Like, all the context added in and certain changes of characters, it, it makes for some incredible storytelling and some incredible scenes. And on top of all of this, the visuals, <laughs> VFX, CGI, practical effects, every type of effect looks great it's just it looks visually incredible they did a great job my rating would be a 9.5 out of 10. The main part for me is always like the story and characters but and action scenes of course but for it to look that good <laughs> it makes it even easier on the eye so uh yeah uh, it was it was just such a beautiful looking film the entire time and also terrifying and i don't mean the visuals I forgot to mention, there are some very terrifying scenes from certain characters. And watching it in IMAX, like I really recommend seeing it in like an IMAX or something else like a Dolby or, you know, anything that's, you know, loud and visually enhanced. you got to see it in one of these screens because the sound effects, <laughs> there are some terrifying scenes in this. And I feel like you got to see it in IMAX uh, or Dolby to really experience what they're giving you because it is bloody incredible and if it's still available in IMAX or Dolby when I get home I might watch it again because it is insane <laughs> I'm not gonna get that experience again from watching it on Blu-ray I will get the Blu-ray um, and I'm gonna love it on Blu-ray as well but watching it in IMAX oh my days <laughs> oh my days but even on top of that just you know 
great, great storytelling. So I'm looking forward to the third one, which I'm pretty sure they're doing. Uh, I think the director said that's his last one. So if they're doing more than three, it'll be someone else taking the helm. But I'm more than happy with what he is doing with these films. And uh, I am very confident he'll do a great job with the third one. So bring it on, however long it takes. Take your time. We need it to be great. This was delayed as well. It was worth the wait. This was delayed, I think, for different reasons anyway. But still, it was worth the wait. So I, I will wait three years, five years for the next one. Do it right, and I'll be there if I can on day one. This is your boy, Zavidoff. Please like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, and goodbye.